Welcome to our video on the law of sines. Law of sines is nice because it sets up these interesting rate ratios in any triangle. So I mean, if we have, let's say, let's try our best here. We have this triangle, right? Don't know what kind of triangle it is. It's definitely not a right triangle. Basically, what the law of sines says is if I have this angle over here, let's call it angle one, angle two, and angle three. We can show that the sine of angle one over side length a, let's call this a, is equal to well, sine of sine of angle one over a is the same thing as the sine of angle two over side length b, which is the same thing as and it keeps going, the sine of angle three over c. And we'll call this c. So the, the sine of this angle over its opposite side equals the sine of this angle over its opposite side in any triangle. And that equals the, the sine of this angle to over its opposite side. Or the reverse. We could say A over the sine of angle 1, that ratio equals B, or fraction, equals B over the sine of angle 2, equals C over the, the sine of angle 3. Cool. And now let's look at where that comes from, because memorizing this won't help you. Right? It might help you for tomorrow if you have a test, but um, it will not stay with you. You'll forget it. And also, you won't appreciate what's going on here, and you'll be bored, and you'll just be memorizing facts, and that's just no fun. So where did all this come from? Well, let's draw another triangle. And I'm going to use the same numbers, because otherwise um, we can't go back nicely to our first slide. So here's angle 1 across from side A, and here's angle 2 across from side B. And we're going to leave angle C out of this for now. Um, if I drop a perpendicular here, or an altitude, whatever you want to say, you drop this and make two right triangles. Now we can deal with sine the way we know how to, right? With right triangles, the sine of an angle equals the opposite side, which is this green side, over the hypotenuse, right? So let's call this x. We don't know where it is. But now we know that the sine of angle 1 equals the opposite x over the hypotenuse, b. So if I multiply both sides by b, I get b times the sine of angle 1 equals x. And then if I do the same thing for angle 2, the sine of angle 2 is going to equal its opposite, which is x over a, the hypotenuse of this triangle right here. And if I multiply both sides by a, I get a times the sine of angle 2 equals x. So if x equals a times the sine of 2, x also equals b times the sine of 1, then b times the sine of 1 has to equal a times the sine of 2. Right? These are equal to each other. And we can write that as this, b side b times the sine of angle 1 equals side a times the sine of angle 2. And we could play around with this now. If we divide both sides by a, well, a divided by a cancels out, and the sine of angle 2 equals b times the sine of angle 1 over a. But if I divide this side by b, I have to do the same thing here, and we start to get our, our law of sines, right? b divided by b is 1. So the sine of angle 1 over a equals the sine of angle 2 over b. So the sine of this angle to this side that ratio equals the sine of this angle to its opposite side over here. And we could flip these things around. We can, when we're at this first stage over here. What I could have done was say, well, what if I had, I'll write out B sine of angle 1 equals A sine of angle 2. We divide it by A here. Well, what if I divided both sides by sine of 2 instead of that? Well, sine of 2 divided by itself is 1. So now we have B sine of 1 over sine of 2 equals a. If I divide this side by the sine of 1 and that side by the sine of 1, I get b over the sine of 2 equals a over the sine of 1, which is the same thing here, but I just flip the sides of the a's and the b's, and we have reciprocals. But the reciprocals do work. 
What about, um, I, I mentioned a third angle, right? This over here. How, what do we do with this angle 3 inside C? Does it equal all this stuff? Well, yes, the law of science says it does work. Let's show how that works. We'll make some room over here. And everything we do here is the same idea as what we just did before, only we're, um, we're, we're dealing with another angle inside. So anyway, um, here's what we do. And I... I feel like I should erase, I guess I have to erase the whole thing. <laughs> Let me just make a new triangle. So with this new side, let me try and get this right. We have so over here, we have angles 1, 2, and 3. So here's 1, 2, and 3. And then sides A, B, and C, right? And so before we drop this altitude here. But if I want to use this angle, I want to drop an altitude either this way or here. I'm going to choose this way because I started that already. And now we have two new right triangles. We have this one right here that we're going to work with, the sine, and this one over here as well. And it all ties together. So um, the, the sine of angle 3, what does that equal? Well, the opposite, we don't know what that is. We'll call it y. The sine of angle 3 equals y over the, the hypotenuse, which is a over here for the, this blue triangle and same techniques as before a times the sine of angle 3 equals y and then sine of angle 1 equals y over c because the opposite over the hypotenuse there multiplying both sides by c we get c times the sine of angle 1 equals y and now these two are equal Right? y equals c times the sine of 1 and y equals a times the sine of 3 so a times the sine of 3 equals c times the sine of 1 well now we can just do similar manipulations as before we divide both sides by a and, and by c let's do it at once divided by a and divided by c it cancels out c's cancel out so we get the sine of I don't know if we can see this the sine of angle 3 over its opposite side, C, equals the sine of angle 1 over its opposite side, A. And we said before that, that the sine of angle 1 over A equals the sine of angle 2 over its opposite side, B. So if these two equal each other, and these two equal each other, by the transitive property, they all equal each other. So the sine of angle 2 over its opposite side, B, equals the sine of angle 1 over its opposite side A, which equals sine of angle 3 over its opposite side C. And again, it's just saying that if I take the sine of this angle to its opposite side, it equals the sine of this angle to its opposite side, which equals the sine of this angle to the ratio of its opposite side. That's a really useful relationship, especially when we don't even know, we didn't even know in the beginning what kind of a triangle this was. And we could, of course, flip everything as well. C over the sine of angle 3 equals A over the sine of angle 1, which equals um, B over the sine of, of angle 2. And you and you probably, if you were to see this in a textbook, would see B over the sine of angle B, and A over the sine of angle A, and C over the sine of angle C. And we could, could have done that in our diagram. We could have said, well, this is angle C, this is angle A, and that's angle B. I just didn't want to mess that up. If I use too many A's and B's and C's, I get lost in my own work.